Hello, welcome to Cinema Royale. I'm your host, Mike Mixtape. In this episode, we're going to talk about Easter movies. Uh, we teased about it last year. We're going to talk about Easter movies this year. Um, mm-hmm. You know what? You know what? <clears throat> this this is getting ridiculous. Really? Fucking Easter movies? There's not enough Easter movies out there uh, to talk about. Uh, there there is. There is. Ben-Hur, okay. The Ten Commandments, no, Prince no, of what? Egypt, Battlefield no. Earth, um, a, a Batman vs. No, no, Superman. Uh, no. Passion of the Christ. Ten, shut up. Technically, Rise of the Guardians. I, I got Passion of the Christ. Shut Technically, up. Rise of the Guardians. Shut up. What? Shut up. What? Shut up. What? You, 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 and you, you're all fired. What? 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 I was only twice. What, what, what for? I, I, what for? I've had it. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? I've, I've had it. Had what? You had what? We. I, I sat down and watched it's torture just... porn for this. Come on. Oh, wait a minute! I, I was torch. Oh yeah, yeah, you didn't have to. You could have chosen something Mike, else Mike, to fucking I just, watch. I just need to show you something. I actually went far enough to go and get the freaking DVD of this movie. Well, the Blu-ray, the Blu-ray. It's not. It's not. It's yes, not it, an Easter movie. What? It just has the Easter. It just has the Easter bunny, and that's you it. Know, it's by a huge jacket. The project has it. Easter. Trust me. Just hop. Just hop, and here comes your fucking yeah, tail. No. Exactly. So what? That's what I chose. It's not what I... to do. I, yes, I, yes, I, yes, yes, I sat down and watched Pop with you just because you were trying to make a counter to watch for this I spent episode. Hours, literally freaking hours, explaining why Rise of the Guardians is in fact an Easter movie, why it actually counts. For God's sake, you can't just pull this what? out of your butt and like suddenly realize it doesn't count. Like I even asked you, you said it was freaking okay. What about That's... the, the, the I, American I just... Rabbit? I just, I'm just doing every fucking episode, every holiday. I, maybe I'll do a freaking Fourth of July episode at well, and I'll do a freaking Groundhog's Day episode. I don't know. Every holiday needs a movie, so we did it for Christmas. That's it. But Easter, oh my God, there's not enough films for that. I just, Mike, I'm just sick of doing no, this. No offense. I just, I, I just, you got, you got, you guys are just, you guys are. Mike, mm. no, no offense. I mean, like, you kind of set your own trap there. If you're going to get mad over the fact that there's not enough Easter movies, I mean, you set your own godforsaken trap. This is your idea. You got no one to blame but yourself. You can't just, like, unleash your rage on I us. Know. It's, it's just you. You pull up the Easter movie the rip point. Wikipedia and everything, and it just. Mike. Mike, I, would it help if I sang you a soothing song to warm your icy heart? It's just, what could you do to cheer me up? And just in a sour hey, mood, Mike, I'm just Mike, sick Mike, of Mike, this Mike. podcast. Let Look me... us in the eyes and say that, please. Yeah, seriously, like, you can't, you, you can't just cover I, your face. I'm, 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 I'm sick of doing this podcast for three years. Well, if that's the case... Never ending story. La, la, da, 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 no, da, no. Turn wow. around. Two hours later. What did we do? I didn't um, do it. Wait a minute. It's my fault. I didn't have a song. Well, again, I guess Friday Night's Date Night again. I thought it worked. Hey, do you mind if two dudes join you? We got, I mean, like, I got nothing to do so far. I mean, Morgan, you got anything? Oh, uh, I was thinking of making my own uh, podcast of Blackjack and Hookers, but I think I'm forgetting about the podcast. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, well, you can forget about the podcast. The other stuff, I mean, keep it in. Cool. Keep it in. Yes. You, you can bring Depp along, along, too. Morgan, I'm with Morgan, Depp. Morgan, yo, between you and me, just remember, next time, sharing is herring, man, okay? Says the Canuck who stole a bunch of awards to me at this recent country one time awards. one time <laughs> on, 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 oh no 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 dude dude listen 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 it's not my choice that's the 50 audience. movies 50 movies that's, that's the audience choice not mine okay i had nothing to do with it all i did was that i made my own top 10 long before you did your top 50 movies if anyone needs me, I'm having war in Canada. Let's turn to shipstorm. I have no idea. I am Canada. Okay, hold on a sec, guys. Uh, I, someone's at the door. Hold on a sec. I don't know who it is. But... 
Yeah, it was nice meeting you too, Morgan. Ah. Ah. Where did he shoot you? I was gonna say I don't ah, know where. I don't, I don't know. I only feel pain now. Ah. Let's just say a nice link ah. shut up Main Street did the trick. Ah. Is that oh, what no. nowadays? Ah. 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 Oh, the destruction ah. of Adamant. Oh no, he's gonna be having this period no, no, for the no, next five no, no, months. No, I just need one hospital thing. I just, uh, I, ah, oh, man, crap! Did I call nine one one? I'm starting to forget. Jeez. Ah, ah. I... Oh no. Oh, this if is I bad. Were... I heard of those Canadian hospitals. If I were using, gonna... if I were don't, use... don't worry, man. At least it's free. If I were to use a famous quote at this point, welcome to hell. Ah. Okay, I'm ah, back. Ah, jeez. Ah, jeez. Ah, Ontario, you're up. next. I entered hell and back, and these are my hellmates. Oh, no. <laughs> what did I start? What did I start? Oh, God, I did start? Why did I do this? Never-ending <sighs> story. Oh, no, no, no. Hey, come on, man. That's not fun. Seriously, man. I need to hide now. Seriously, I need help. I need, I need help, man. Oh, my. I need help. Never-ending story. Blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 Déjà un attend Link, qu'est-ce qui vient d'arriver? Moi, je, je, je sais que c'est Park là, ben quand même. Qu'est-ce que je veux dire, un, un party drunk? Check it, check it. Ouais, je je, je m'en calais dessus, tout le monde est sous là. J'ai juste, j'en ai besoin un là. Hey, hey, tu viens d'ouvrir un hôpital comme super gros là, pis c'est tout rempli avec des, gros, des gars sous. He put, he put, he put one in the soup. Uh, I don't know if, I don't know. Hopefully an ambulance is gonna come, but for now, oh god, jeez, oh, man, now what am I gonna do? You always be lobbyist. Uh, oh, Look at me, I'm Devin. Oh great. <laughs> Ah, uh, great. James is dilly-dallying with his freaking iPad. Meanwhile, I'm still questioning if ever in my life I'll even get a girlfriend. At this point, it's at the en at the tail end, so the answer might be no. Oh, oh well. Man. I still loved a good life, either way. Filling your mind with that double vision. <laughs> I'm a munchkin. Uh, I feel the love. Feel the love. Uh, <laughs> why did I hear that over here and then hear it over there? Uh, that was crazy. That's what happens when you put the iPad on. Mmm. Mm. It smells brand new back here. Mm. I'm hanging up before I lose my mind. <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of out of control. This is like the. <laughs> oh my god, you guys! <laughs> okay, I'm turning this show off. Wait, wrong button. Uh, ooh, here we are. And, uh. Mba. What were in my vitamins this morning? I taste colors. Uh, I, I, I need a fucking pill. When you change that channel, it's not supposed to change back. There can be only one. They're here. Cartoon Royale. Hello, welcome to something a little brand new-ish from me, Mike Mixtape. It's Cartoon Royale. Oh, you gotta have some fun on this one. And we have three new people here. 
Let's go around the table and introduce ourselves. Let's start with Keegan. Hey, hey, how's it going? Or as my catchphrase is, hey guys, Keegs here. Thank you, thank you. Then we got Joseph. Joe Bags of Joe Bags Enterprises, Joe Bags 93. Hello, everybody. <laughs> How you doing, Joseph? In the house. Right on, right on. And last but not least, we got Cameron. Hi, I'm Cameron, and I'm not cool enough for a catchphrase. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's got to have, like, an intro catchphrase. I mean, like, anime has one. I mean, it's actually a pretty good one. In fact, my catchphrase is actually inspired by his. <laughs> well, you know, it isn't always easy to find a catchphrase. I mean, Maybe that is my catchphrase. I'm not cool enough for one for I think one. I just channeled Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, come on, it's, it's not that bad. Oh my gosh, I just channeled James. <laughs> what the fridge? <laughs> hey, that's a good one. I mean, what the fridge is? I, I could buy that catchphrase. I mean, I like, it's kind of like what the deuce? I'd buy that I for mean, a dollar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, we only keep it classy uh, here. Let's keep it classy, people. Um, so all right, I keep classy. <laughs> Indubitably. <laughs> Indubitably so. Uh, so this is a fresh new episode, first episode, typical first episode stuff. So let's just uh, talk about, you know, just cartoons in general. You know, like classics, current favorites. You know, just dive right into it because uh, I know in the past I've talked about, you know. The last episode I've done was Scooby Doo films, and we talked about Scooby Doo and the yeah, I saw that whole specter of Scooby Doo, you know, the shows. And something I forgot to mention in the episode itself was um, that Scooby Doo spawned off a lot of, of other like shows in the vein of the mystery, clones. the clones. Oh, it's like it's like the Call of Duty of like entertainment, basically. <laughs> they just coming every year over and over again. It's just, yeah. Jabberjaw. Speed. Yeah, speed there are a lot of Scooby-Doo shows. Yeah, Speed. I didn't like the one, new one. ones are good. Probably none uh, of them. Uh, the, well, the first one's probably the best. The original, I have seen a bit of Mystery Incorporated, and I do not want to see the new one because it reminds me of, like, Bob's Burgers for some reason. <laughs> how, about the, how about the cartoon series that was based off the live-action movie? <laughs> I mean, I I had to break my DVDs on that podcast. I broke both copies of my live action Scooby Doo movies for that. Oh, right. Sorry, sorry that I have to remind everyone about it. Ohio well, I got to get to that part. I, I hope your scars have recovered. <laughs> it wasn't that hard. It wasn't like, ah, oh, it's glass in my hand, ah! <laughs> I mean, honestly, I gotta say, I mean, as bad as the first one is, it's kind of like a guilty pleasure for me, like, one of them, because, like, it's so bad, but it's kind of, it's enjoyable because of, like, the guy who plays as Shaggy is, like, has all these, like, stoner references, and I just think it was kind of funny how he called that one girl Mary Jane, and he was just so excited about it. I mean, like... <laughs> I gotta tell you, I, I cracked up when I saw that scene when I was, like, older. I didn't get it when I was a kid. I didn't understand it. But then, like, as I got older and saw it again, I was just like, oh, my God. I can't believe they put this in a kid's movie. <laughs> and I don't know who that movie was made for, and I don't think Warner Brothers knew either. No. Made for the yeah. stoners. That's what it was made for. No, yeah. There's, there's, there's a lot of talk about when it comes to cartoons in general. And... Ah, uh, yes. There's just, even movies. Movies are coming out based on cartoons. I mean, oh, God, there's so many. Are they ever good? Yeah, are uh, they? No. Are they? Like this, uh, unless if they're, like, cartoons. Really. I mean, well, most of them are live Well, action. there is hope. I mean, 2015, I think, was kind of the, the big turning point. The yeah, live for action. Gem and the Hologram. <laughs> yeah, Gem and the Holograms and Alvin and the Chipmunks 4 did terribly... While uh, the Peanuts yeah. movie and Spike oh and the Chipmunks went up against Star Wars. Yeah, yeah Star oh, Wars yeah. was the chance. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, you got SpongeBob and the Peanuts movie, which were both faithful and made a decent buck. 
and Sean the Sheep movie has the exclusive bragging rights that it beat Fan Four Stick. I haven't seen Sean the Sheep, but I kind of would like to check it out since I used to watch the shorts on like Disney Channel. I think it was on Disney Channel. It, yeah, it was, it like, was, and it was, it was, it's, it's a very charming movie. Oh yeah, can't argue with the guy who's from Armin. Yeah, you know, you know. Yeah. Oh well. You live, you learn. <laughs> you live, you learn, you die. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I feel like there should be like a list of like the best animated movies based on cartoons. Like, and I should do like a top ten on that stuff because like I feel like it'll be a good idea. I feel like that should be his next top ten best yeah, that, animated that would movies make based top on 10. cartoons. Yeah. I because we all know what the best one is. Cowboy Bebop the movie. <laughs> you know, I'm actually I actually I'm actually almost done watching Cowboy Bebop all the way through for the first time and I haven't watched oh. the movie. Oh it's, man. Honestly, You're... you don't even have to watch a show to watch the movie. It's like its own thing basically. I have it like, right here. Well, I was I have that too. Me too. I have, like, it. I have that also. <laughs> Such uh, a great oh, show. And it's one of my favorite. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, I, that's all right. I, I'd put the Peanuts movie. No, not the Recess Schools out on oh. that list. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have that movie on VHS still. I used to watch that movie yeah. a lot. Yeah, I never watched Recess a lot, but yeah, that movie is pretty enjoyable. Yeah, if if in my opinion, it's the funniest movie Disney has ever made, even more so than the Emperor's New Groove. New Groove. Really? I said it. I, that I might guess. be stressing. That's kind of debatable. I gotta see it again in order to decide that because Emperor's yeah. New Group was pretty funny. They had like a lot. It was yeah. kind of like the Looney Tunes. Yep, yep, it is Looney like, Tunes. But you know, that's the Emperor's New Groove. I like how it's actually Disney's only comedy that's a straight up comedy. Even the dramatic scenes in it are funny. Yeah, it it did really feel like a Disney movie. I felt like it could have been made by like Warner Bros. and it would still do good. But like, yeah. I mean, it was from the directors of Cats Don't Dance, or... And Pick Cats a Little. Don't... Alpaca? Oh, don't... Sorry. Pick a Little. Please don't talk about Chicken Little. I'm sorry, little. I keep ruining everybody's day. I'm sorry, that's like that's the right. worst Disney movie ever made. It, it's not I even agree, Disney. it is. It's terrible. What? Chicken Little? Yeah. I, I can't talk about it. That's like a plague towards Disney. Let's just move on! <laughs> well, we? it's funny, because Emperor's... New Groove had a TV spinoff called Emperor's New School. Oh, yeah. yeah I remember that. And, and there's actually a movie good. called Kronk's New Groove. That was, like, the sequel. It was about Kronk. It's okay. I mean, I know. Or the kit hamming it up. Yep. Doing the old uh, Joe's voice from Family Guy, Kronk. Like, yeah. I love that voice actor. Yeah. Patrick uh, Warburton. Patrick, Patrick yeah. Warburton. Yes. Patrick yeah. Warburton. What are the That's actors a- you hired to do just one voice? Yes, just one oh, yeah, fucking definitely. voice. Like, just say my name or whatever, but I actually know a guy who actually does the voice of him that went to my high school, and literally he sounded like Joe from Family Guy. I could, I, I don't know how to, like, talk like him, but he did it really well. He's like, Peter, stop sitting on me, or I, I don't know. I, I, I'm bad at it, but he, if, it, if he was, like, next to me, he would be pretty good. Like, <laughs> Oh, we can wait. Bring him in. <laughs> All right, I mean, like, we gotta, like, call him and shit, but I'm just... <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> no. Oh, man, what what are some cartoons that Don't you guys are watching? Don't ever anything I say seriously. Oh, cartoons? Ah, uh, yes, time for the subject, the cartoons that we're watching right now. Oh, let me get started on mine. Who wants to go oh. first? All right, so the current one I'm watching um, is definitely Adventure Time. I mean, like, that, that show is, like, I mean, they started airing new episodes on Saturday, and, like, I, I really enjoy and laugh out on every episode they do. And, like, they do good with the story arcs. I mean, like, they're really, like, good stories, and they develop these characters really well, like, as it goes on, and, like, in a funny way. I mean, like, it was actually the first show that actually brought Cartoon Network back to their, like, game by making great animated shows i mean now we got like regular show steven universe um gumball even though i don't really watch that we bear bears and so many 
more great shows that were from the same people who helped out with Adventure Time and Flapjack. But, like, honestly, if people say Flapjack's the start of, like, great animated shows in Cartoon Network again, it's obviously Adventure Time. But I, I really enjoy it. Like, I love Finn. I love Jake. I like how they go on these bizarre adventures and, like, say these stuff that d- doesn't make sense. But, like, they kind of do, like, in a way. But it, it's so good. It has, like, a lot of great symbolism and, like, weird moments that is just like really funny and like a lot of stuff that actually be like related to what's going on in today's society like um same sex couples i mean you can represent marceline and pb with that like they're actually like dating in the show and like it's subtle for it like they're very subtle on like their relationship like especially with their new episode which was about them like honestly i love seeing them together i love how they had that steak special which was like eight parts it was really great i mean i just if people say like adventure times not the same as it was they were wrong because like it just keeps improving on the story some of the jokes can be a bit hit or miss there on the recent season but it's still really good like honestly i i can enjoy adventure time like no matter what and like hopefully it won't get canceled soon because like i just want to see what they'll do with this like TV series, like, honestly, I just really enjoy Adventure Time. <laughs> mm. yeah. Something about Adventure Time I really like is, um, is just all the crazy ideas they come up with, and for visuals and stories. It's oh, just yeah. like, it's yeah. almost like they almost went with whatever was on the top of their head, but I mean that in a good way. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it, uh, it goes just the right amount over the top to where it's surreal but not uncomfortable oh yeah like it's honestly so it's like not like adult swim like weird like you oh, know it shows like, oh, like yeah. there are some adult shows that don't, but i still watch it they're still entertaining like aqua team hunger force i still watch that whenever i'm like bored up at night i mean there's like nothing else to watch but aqua team but like back to the subject like adventure time they settle it well and like I love, like, I don't know, they just do a great job at it, like, and the voice acting, too, like... Yeah, of course just... the voice acting. Might I mention um, that John DiMaggio, who plays Jake, uh, his voice is very distinct, like, he, I, I think he only has one voice. Oh, yeah, I mean, like... like... But it works. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's an easy job, you just sound like yourself, but, like, you just go. I mean, when you're Jake, basically, just... Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, it's good, good delivery. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, as far as my experience with Adventure Time goes, um, I, I wouldn't place it in one of my favorites, but I will say that it's a show that you got to watch with friends, and that's how I watched it with my one of my roommates. I, th- I think my favorite episode so far is... Thank you, you know the one with uh, that's told with ab- very little dialogue and the oh, that snowman and the fire wolf puppy. Yeah. I wouldn't and know what you're talking Finn about. Jake I'm not really ice- caught up on it. They're eating a sandwich on top of him and then like kisses Ice King in the end. He's like, "Thank you." And, yeah, it's a good yeah, way to end it. The- <laughs> huh. yeah, I'm, I'm not really caught up on Adventure Time, so I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's like an older season. I mean, like, oh, yeah. it's, it was like a Thanksgiving special, I think, but... I wouldn't say it's a Thanksgiving special so much as it is just a standalone cartoon. But it was, I know, but it was released on Thanksgiving, and it had that Thanksgiving-like feel, even though it wasn't, yeah. like, a traditional yeah, Thanksgiving like special. Nice, especially yeah, was, if you live somewhere where it's uncommon, it's not uncommon to get snow for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Trust me, there's never snow in my area. Uh, I live in Montana. There's snow everywhere here. <laughs> but not this year. It's been great this year. Yeah, same down down south uh, in, a, in the old uh, potato state. Mm-hmm. Old potato okay. state. But it's kind of interesting how they did the concept art of Adventure Time because, like, their storyboard yeah. basically yeah. takes, it's- like, it takes, like, nine to, like, ten months for a to complete an episode because they take a long time to do like the storyboard because of all like the movement that's going on in that yeah. episode 
like it's just amazing how they managed to cram all that had so much effort to make the show so like amazing and like not like very detailed but like a little bit detailed because like i just think it works that way a simple design but a lot of movement that's a trend i'm noticing with a lot of modern animation that's going more traditional hand-drawn Actually, I, I like that. That's actually something I like to talk about. The, sim- the more simplistic design than the cartoons these days. Yeah. It, I, I know it, it might be like, uh, like it, it might be less time consuming to design the characters that way when they do the animation. But uh, sometimes, sometimes I feel like they're a little too simplistic. Like I look at them and I go like, hmm. I, I don't know. What, what do you guys yeah, think I about see that? where you're coming from, but I think it makes up for it in a very fluent, very dynamic character animation. Yeah. I mean, it has to be done right, and it has to be subtled right, because, like, what I feel like what's going wrong right now with this kind of trend is that they're kind of, like, exposing too much of it, and some of it's kind of looking similar from one show than the other, like... Mm. For, when I watch We Bear Bears, it's a great show, but some of the character designs, they just feel like it was just straight up from Adventure Time, basically. Mm-hmm. And, like, that could be said from the new Powerpuff Girls show. Like, some of those character designs were just, like, recycle designs from Clarence, basically. Taken I just, straight from the original cartoon! I, 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 what... I don't know. I just feel like that's why I don't think the new Powerpuff Girls show is going to do that well but i'm still gonna go watch to see like what it's gonna be like but i'm not gonna be that invested in it than like basically the original because i don't know it just doesn't have the same feel well maybe you know well, yeah okay. let's let's go move on to cameron all right cameron where are you watching yeah. now oh, all right so all right well i've been watching an anime called uh nadia uh, secret of blue water oh Interesting. Right. And um, short short answer, it's a very good sh- very good anime. I, I mean, I think it's uh, the story is very well done. It's a very beginning, middle, end story. It's only forty episodes. Mm. It's and, a great um, show. Yeah, it is. It, it came out about nineteen ninety, I think. Oh. And uh, yeah, it's pretty old. And it's from the creators of Evangel- Evangelion. <sighs> Love that show too. Even though I don't right, like so, Shinji. Yeah, so the um, the story is um, there's this uh, girl named Nadia who is uh, from from some, who and of some unknown origin, and she has a she has a crystal called the Blue Water, and she meets this boy named Jean in France during a world fair, and they they go on an adventure trying to figure out what the, the what where the Blue Water is is leading them. Now, that might sound a little familiar if you're familiar with Miyazaki's Castle in the Sky. Oh, actually, well, can I bring definitely something that, up? But I was thinking more of a, like, Del Toro Quest, which was originally a book series, and I heard that got mm-hmm. made into an anime. But for some reason, I keep thinking about uh, children's fantasy books that I would pick up and read at random in elementary school, and that that that's pretty much the vibe mm-hmm. I'm getting from the description you're you're presenting. Yeah. So but, the um, um oh, the, oh yeah, the, uh, 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 it being very it is if you watch the show you'll start and if you've seen Castle in the Sky you'll start really noticing similarities. You're like, huh, that's that sounds a little blatant, but actually it's not completely unexplained. Back, back in the 1970s, uh, Miyazaki was commissioned to do a show about. Uh, about the adventures of Jules Verne, but and of all the Jules Verne books, and there's a lot of Jules Verne stuff in there. Like there's there's Captain Nemo and the Nautilus and everything, and um, from Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea, and the show it's never a good got book, made. By the way, what? oh yeah, uh, Twenty Thousand Leagues never got... Under the Sea. It's a good book. Yeah, it is a good book. The the show never got made, and Miyazaki incorporated a lot of the things he uh, he was going to use for that show into Castle in the Sky. And then the show got picked up again several years later by the creators of um, Evangelion, and and they just went with all pretty much all of his ideas. It's a little it sounds a little shady, doesn't it? I mean, 
I actually, I've seen Nadia's Secret of the Blue Water. I've seen like the first 10, 11 episodes of it, but I don't know why I didn't get back into it because of all these other things that's going on right now in my life, which I don't want to explain, but like, I don't know. I, I think it's a great show, though. There was one problem I had with it is that one of the episodes, they had like that lazy animation sequence. I think it was like episode oh, yeah. four. And the mouth was just like a bit off. I don't know, but when he was the one guy was talking, I think what's his name again? But like, like this. The, yeah, it the was boy, like I the main boy. Yeah, what's his name again? It's John. Like, John. Yeah, when John was talking, I think while he was like eating at the same time, it, like the mouth was like off for oh, some reason. Yeah, I don't know. That was like my only flaw with it. But yeah, it is very similar to Castle of the Sky, and I'm trying to get back into it soon. Like. And by, by I, having, uh, sorry, good. Sorry. Uh, by the way, I, I, no, I was gonna say like, where did you get the DVD box set of that? Because I usually just watch all my animes online, and I like to. Um, I watched the first ten episodes of this, and I decided I liked it, and I was like, I'm gonna buy it, <laughs> and I, 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 I don't regret it. I, it, it was worth the money. And besides, and besides, it's, it's a show I like, so I guess I better support it. Oh yeah, exactly. and um, one one big problem I had with the show was the romance. Uh, so uh, John and Nadia, uh, yeah. of course, everyone knows they're going to get together at the end, and they drag it out way too long. Like there, there's so many scenes where it's like, oh, it looks like they're going to get together, and then Nadia gets jump, mad at John for like absolutely no reason, and then they, they keep get doing back, that? go back to square. Oh my gosh, what? they keep like doing that cliche like they're gonna get oh, together yeah. but they they, don't oh my gosh it was gosh. in the 90s so like maybe it wasn't that big of a cliche then but, i'm yeah, sorry to notice annoying. that but and there's so many there's so many parts in the series where it's like oh they're finally gonna get together and they're finally gonna shut up but then they um then she gets mad at him again and like oh come on just keep moving that's that is until you get to the last five episodes and then it's then it's like okay they're, they're, they're Sounds good. like a more fantasized version of this book in a nutshell on the fence. <laughs> um, I've never, I've never but, read it. You know, I'm yeah. open for that. I mean, I liked this book, so... Yeah. yeah um, and also, the, there, there's, a, there's a moment in the show. It's like episode 25 to 34. It's kind of a lull moment in the show. Like, it just kind of slows down and doesn't really get into anything. But, uh, but other than that, I have to say it's a pretty good show and definitely worth watching and definitely worth checking out. <clears throat> it's kind right. of interesting how it came out in that time, like the late like eighties. Like it looked really yeah. good. Like honestly, they didn't get, except for that one animation error. But like overall, it yeah. looked really good. Like I think a uh, a lot of animes at that time had a lot of cheap animation tricks. Like even the original Dragon Ball shows did it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, a fil- I'm familiar with those cheap animation check te- techniques, but hey, you know, it it's a it's it pretty it's an unfortunate trend in a lot of anime. Yeah, yeah. I had firsthand experience with it in Pokemon. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I I, I could see that because I noticed like an error where Professor Oak, I think, it was like one of the later episodes, and they kind of like colored in like the characters like eyebrows in wrong and like <laughs> like the original ninja turtle show there's so many animation yes. errors oh so i gotta many. tell you i i love the animation of the 80s one the most i think because it's like cheap but it looks it reminds me of like an anime for some reason yeah, yeah they, they i think i think that's one of the first shows where they had like overseas animators working on it mm-hmm. yeah, yeah they did a good so job kind of japanese yeah. well i'm not a turtle fan i'm I'm kind of partial to the 2003 incarnation, but, you know, Tomato Tomato, and who the heck says Tomato? Tomato Tomato, or... Tomato Tomato. Tomato Tomato. (laughs) It's it's interesting with the Turtles, because I'm a huge Turtles fan. Um, The 80s cartoon is, like, amazing when it comes to, like, animation quality sometimes. I mean, sometimes they get the errors, you know, there's some... uh, Cinemassacre James Rolfe did a whole video about... uh, turtle flubs and i saw that it's amazing how he went through with like the best ones he's found and it's just like there's sometimes it's it's like the voices change on characters and the colors got switched around it's it's like are you animators like not paying attention to the animation putting in a lot of overtime (laughs) it's like 
Yeah. yeah they're, they're living in their well, sleep. I don't the, want to do this anymore. <laughs> they died while they were they... doing it. <laughs> and then they, and then a bunch of five-year-olds took are. over their job. Yeah, considering how big the turtles are, I wouldn't be surprised. In fact, I'm surprised that the 2003 and current incarnation are as smooth as they are, you know? Well, I mean, it's not bad. It's typical 2003 animation, like 2000s animation, because like, I think X-Men cool Evolution... Yeah, X-Men Evolution kind of had that same style as to, like the 2003 Turtles for some reason. I don't know. Batman. I always compare those two styles, because I also grew up with those two shows, and they always aired like around the same time. Yeah, the 2003 Turtles was like made by four kids animation, I believe. I think four kids knew what they were doing. Uh, the the 80s cartoon was made by like a, like a fresher new thing. I think Fred Wolf did it and and his animation company. And it was just the 80s 80s animation were kind of like does that. You know, it looks like grainy because 80s you know it's got that grainy look with sometimes the animation. Mm -hmm. The uh, the current one the I actually like it. Oh yeah, it's great. It's, it's really cool developed. actually. It, it brings that Depends. influence from anime kind of for it some does. reason like. I think I think once the once anime got big in the U.S., I think other animators are trying to emulate it somehow in their own shows, which is a nice touch. Batman the Animated Series is a good example. Like you can tell that some Japanese animators were working on the show. Yeah, and of course, entire animation sequences. I could name a bunch in My Little Pony, but we'll, we'll save that for when the movie comes out. Oh gosh, to make it another one. I'm sorry, I'm not Brody. I'm not trying to like um, criticize anyone, but I'm not Brody. And like, I mean, I get why people like it, but I, it's just not my thing. It's not like, your thing. Not, yeah, not my thing. That's okay. <clears throat> That's okay. I don't have to take you to see the movie any. Now that I know that. <laughs> I'm gonna I mean, tie I'll... myself up and make sure you never do. <laughs> <laughs> um. The current turtles, the current turtles, the three D animation. It's actually pretty darn good, actually. I'm surprised. Like it's really, yeah. good, I like really the current turtles. Yeah, really good CGI. It's, it's, it's a good kids show. I mean, I don't think I'll get into it, but like, it's a good kids show, and I can see why kids would like get into yeah. it, and the fans too. I mean, yeah. like, the fans will definitely get into it more because, like, it's actually kind of because of the new episode where they're doing the crossover with like the eighties like cartoon. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I've heard stuff about that. <laughs> It's gonna be interesting. Oh, yeah. And they bring it's, in the original voice actors. Yep. I mean, like that's actually a pretty nice. good idea. It, and it, it's not the first time they did it. No, they that's uh, the first time was Turtles Forever, which crossed over to the 2003 with the 80s Turtles, which they didn't bring the original voice actors on that one. <laughs> and the comic book Turtles. <laughs> yes. And oh they did, God. They did, I feel like you ever read the original <laughs> comic? Yep. It no, violent. but they killed off Donatello. <laughs> Spoilers. Okay, in the, yeah, in those comics. Yeah, they do. Um, <laughs> no, if I think it's amazing. I'm. I say I'm not a fan of Ninja Turtles. Yeah, I know a lot about them. Exactly. <laughs> oh, same here. Like, yeah. I mean, it's not uncommon to know about them. I was a big fan of it. Um, the the, the crossover uh, Transdimensional Turtles that like, came out during Easter, so it's available to watch on Nickelodeon, like right now. So you better check that out right away. It's. I saw it. It is just phenomenal. Like the way they cross over the two turtles, and um, they actually do uh, cross over with the comics turtles as well, as in a brief little scene, oh. which, which was so nice. It was just like it was a great homage to the '80s, the the comics. It was just like the current show is like it's up. It's damn good. It, All right. I'm still waiting for that direct adaptation of the original comics really violent and dark. <laughs> oh, man, that's going to be better than, like, probably the Michael Bay version. That's probably going to be the oh, most yeah. reboots. No, Zack Snyder's going to direct it. It's going to be no, stylized, no, good, not Zack but Snyder. it's going to be shit. Like... No, no. <laughs> let's, do, uh, let's have uh, Matthew Vaughn direct it. You do great. Okay. All right. I mean... <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> not Matthew... I said Matthew Vaughn, not Matthew Broderick. <laughs> Oh, oh God! That Matthew Vaughn is the director of Kingsman: The Secret Service. Oh hell yeah! That movie was like the shit. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I'm kind of like 
having a guilty pleasure towards actually wanting to see the new Turtles movie coming out this year. Same here. Like, I am too, I because the trailer is really fun. Trailer. Yes. It's a no, fun trailer. I, I look at the trailer and I'm like, this is stupid in all the best ways yes. possible. So, yeah. it's, it's interesting. In a way, it kind of looks like they're trying to right the wrong from the first movie. Yes, exactly. Cause in, in, in a way. Yeah, I think that's what they did. They 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 took the the information from the first movie and all the critic and all the audience uh, thoughts on it. It's like, the positive feedback. It's apparently. very mm-hmm. unlike the baby. Yeah, it's very like not that edgy like the no. first one, but more like a fun pick. But like having all this original turtle stuff coming in, even though I don't know much about it, but I kind of yeah. do because I've seen like some of the cartoons. So <laughs> yeah, it's it's. It's actually going to be a great, you know, homage to everything of Turtles. I just can't wait to see that. Yeah, that catchy song. That catchy song basically nailed it. It's like, I don't... Uh, I was thinking about the one from the trailer from the new movie, but yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. I prefer the more the more guitar stream one. Oh, yeah. Right, should we move on to the next one, then? Yes, we can. Ah, yeah. yes. And that brings it to me. So, I've done two modern shows and one uh, past show, which means past show for me. And I have selected Liberty Kids. Oh, I remember oh, that. That show gave yeah. me nightmares. I don't know. Okay. The reason why it gave me nightmares, I, there's never a reason why, but I used to watch it, like, kindergarten a lot, and then, like... I always get nightmares the day like after I saw it, and I don't know why. But then when I got older, I started not to anymore. It was just a weird childhood story. But back yeah. to the subject. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Well. Um. I but yeah, Liberty Kids, a show about like you look at the base, what is going on behind the scenes, and you think this show is going to be absolutely terrible, like. We're going to tell the story about the American Revolution in a cartoon for kids. And our main characters are teenagers because that's what kids are into these days. <laughs> and we're going to have the same team behind Captain Planet do everything about it. And for the theme song, it'll be a pop number with a rap in it. Got yourself oh a winner God. there. I remember the opening song. That opening song, like, I don't know. I yeah, kinda it's got... freaking awesome! <laughs> you, wait, really? I mean, like... It's, yeah, yeah, it's pretty catchy, actually. It is catchy, yeah. but, like, I would I say really it's, like, it. up there catchy, like... It, it's kind of like one of those songs that you play and, like, yeah, they, they, they're... They're putting all their talent and effort into this song, yeah. And the show itself, it's really magnificently told. Like, I have seen a lot of history books and documentaries, and Liberty Kids is the closest thing you can get to an honest viewpoint of the American Revolutionary War without visiting actual locations where it took place because they take advantage of the kids where one is a British loyalist, the other is a colonist and the other is a friend is a little French boy who is just observing everything kind of like the mediator. And, um, it, it doesn't shy away from acknowledging the smart moments, uh, from the British and, also acknowledges the jerk moves of the colonists as well and it, and it and it when it got brutal it didn't get graphic or gory but it got really brutal through clever editing and expression and this is P- PBS we're talking here oh i forgot i was on PBS yes. PBS yeah. kids oh my PBS goodness. kids yeah. <laughs> yep yeah i remember i I haven't seen that show since I was a kid. I, I think I need to watch it again. But I remember it having kind of a Don Bluth esque feeling to it. Like, really? Really? Yeah, I, I've like, never like heard just, someone just how, say like, that. Just like how 
kind of brutal it is sometimes, like how kind oh, of dark like, it is. Yeah, in, in that, in that sense, aspect. Actually. Well, yeah. it is historically accurate, so you got to make it kind of like yeah. how it is back then. Mm-hmm. So, like it kind of reminds me of an American tale almost. Yeah, in fact, I really uh, didn't really like that movie. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, really? But anyway, it was too you, dark you and gloomy. Up, you bring up the dark stuff, and one episode that really stood out to me was there was an episode where they talked about the subject of tarring and feathering. Oh yeah. And <laughs> In that episode, one of our main characters that we're supporting, he is going to the tar and feathering, laughing and jeering and mocking at the person who's being tarred and feathered. And I'm like, holy smokes, this is PBS are, this. The characters yeah. are really crossing that gray line. Yeah, but... Which is always it, it evens, Yeah, but it evens out in showing the aftermath, and... They, they don't shy away from the pain, but, you know, they... And the humor surprisingly works. It's it's very fitting for the time period. And I, don't think, they, I don't think you should talk about tar and feathering and then start talking about humor. Oh, yeah, like, seriously. And, <laughs> Sorry. I mean, like, whatever, you were that guy laughing in that scene, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that guy's being tortured. Yeah. Uh, was, All right. uh, go, go I wasn't continue. laughing. I was going... Wow, they're <laughs> going there. I mean, it, it's cool how it was like deep and like it was something different from PBS at that time. And I felt like it was kind of cool because the typical PBS kids show was just like aimed towards like toddler kids. I have to be honest, like Clifford, like Big Red Dog and like, you know, all the other shows that we all yeah. grew up with. Like, great show. Yeah, but, like this actually like, doing a look approach. back on PBS and. So, yeah. also something so, pretty similar to uh, Liberty Kids that came out around the same time was the Red Wall Show. Oh man, Red yeah, Wall! Yeah, that, that was good. Yeah, I love that. No, I haven't seen that. Yeah, it, I I don't know how it got on PBS, but it yeah. like Red Wall. It's really good, really interesting. But See, I think um, they should do that with more uh, with more classic books. They should like uh, make a short animated series based off of them. They, they need to do that more. Yes, they did yes, actually on um, the Wayside School TV series. They kind of did that. I mean, they made, they made a Wayside Logan. TV show. Yeah, yeah it was on Nickelodeon yeah, for a bit. I didn't even knew it at the time, but like because I was reading the book when the, the show came out, and like. It was. It's nothing like how I thought the book was, cause like, but they had some characters from the book be in the series, like the teacher and like some of the weird students, and like some of the themes were still in the book. But it was pretty well accurate, actually. Yeah, that's awesome. But yeah, and one thing that um, Liberty Kids did at the end of the series was they gave hints that almost like the creators were like. Hey, can we do the Civil War, please? And I'm like, after after how well you guys did this, yeah, go for it. But man, I nope. can't imagine doing the doing World War II, doing Nazi Germany, airing on PBS. Oh, yeah. oh no, I would definitely watch too, that. It, it'll be like yeah. Slender. it be like Slender. Um, what is it? Schindler's List for kids, basically. Yeah. <laughs> I think I. <laughs> We're not going there. 9-11 for kids. I'm such a terrible that? person, but... <laughs> oh, my God. Titanic for kids. Oh, they made that. Never mind. Oh, no. <laughs> the rapping dog. Okay. Go get some party go. time. Oh, party party time. time. Anyway. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that's my thoughts on Liberty Kids. I'll be posting a list of the top ten best PBS shows. Oh, um, I got to check that out. Yeah, and uh, you should be got, Mike should be interested to know that one of those shows, my number one pick, is what I consider the epitome of the best '90s entertainment. Hmm? But that. you'll have to see. It. Uh, it's not Liberty Kids. Liberty Kids is number two. Oh, oh, oh that's interesting. Did your second favorite show? Because. That's kind of interesting because I was gonna like pick Avatar: Last Airbender, but then oh, I was talking about PBS shows. 
Just oh, I thought my like favorite show what we were talking about like on here. No, she's she's just talking oh. about PBS shows as a whole, not just any yeah. other cartoon. Sorry, I I got I lost track. Okay. <laughs> got it all That's okay, but it. hey, but hey, uh, I talked about my past cartoon, Keegan. Let's hear about yours. Oh. Well, I mean, we've been talking about it already, but I had to pick, um, I gotta pick Cowboy Bebop. I mean, like, honestly, I feel, all, most of you guys know about the show, I know about it, but I just like to tell my thoughts about it. Mm-hmm. Just, like, everything, the symbolism, and everything that's well shot, and the music was just glorious. It, it's just a really incredible show, like, and, like, literally you can start on any episode you want, though I recommend you watch them in order because and like honestly everything it's just well inspiring of a show and like they actually took some themes from um you guys seen lupin the third before right Mm -hmm. like the tv show or the movie oh yeah they took some influence off that but like they made it 10 times better and more mature and like adding like quotes to this there was like lines in the show they're like considered one of my favorite quotes of like of all time i mean I wish I had like a list on it, but it, it's just like they, it was. It's just a well-written show and like well shot, especially the episodes where they showed um, Spike fighting against Vicious and looking for um, Ju- Juliet. That's her name, and like it just was like well done, and like the music touches the tone of like his like situation, and especially the final two episodes was probably one of my all-time oh, favorites. Well, That's I mean. I'm not going to spoil it because I waited like two years to watch those episodes because I didn't want to finish finish the show like all the way through until it was the right time. And I'm I'm glad it well was. And like, I, I don't, it, it's just so good. Like Spike is probably one of the coolest anime characters ever. I mean, everything about him is great. The English dubbing, probably the greatest English Even dubbing. Them. Yeah, of all time. I mean, nothing can be topped by Cowboy Bebop, no matter what. But like... Yeah. It's just a well drawn show. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely one of the best shows. Actually, probably one of the best shows I've ever seen. Probably the best. And um, yeah, I I just love the characters. You could create an episode. I especially love the episodes where they're just sitting around just being themselves. Like if like that was just a whole show, I would have watched it anyway. <laughs> or like, them like my, doing my favorite stuff. character is probably Ed. <laughs> She's really funny. I, I really oh, love I love, I loved her episode that she was in, like when she was just like going to get like food or something, and like oh, literally yeah. all the other guys they were eating shrooms and they were tripping on shrooms. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. it was just a yeah. great episode, and like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that that sounds interesting. It's it's a great... like I haven't seen Cowboy Beep Up, but I'd say the closest thing I've seen to it is Firefly. Yes. Oh, I gotta oh, yeah, watch yeah. that show. Wait, is it actually like similar to Cowboy Beep Up? It's, like, it's very similar. Actually. Very similar. It's kind of a space. It, it, I gotta check this show out. It's in, it's in the space western genre. Yeah, it takes the elements of a space western, kind of close to Cowboy Beep Up. So if you like space westerns like Cowboy Beep Up, Firefly might be in your wheelhouse. Yeah. It's on Netflix it right out. now. Oh, it's been oh, on Netflix, gotta yeah. Check it. I gotta check Netflix. it out. It's never leaving Netflix. Yes, it's it, it only lasted. It, it only lasted. It didn't last long too. It only lasted like it only lasted thirteen episodes. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was, yeah, it got canceled when it was. And with Alan Tudyk making him making a name of himself at Disney, uh, I and raising awareness of Firefly, I doubt it's gonna be le- leaving. No, it's a um, great call following. Yeah, but it'd be kind of weird if they continue it off. I mean, I don't know. I mean, because it came when did it came out again? Like, oh god, it was two thousand seven, two thousand and two, two thousand three, I think. Yeah, yeah. They, I I don't know how they'll do that. Like, continue off the characters. They must have had like a huge like time gap or whatever. Well, one of them was a little girl. Yeah, maybe she could be, like, the new main character. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know. I don't well, know any of the characters. Well, I'm just bringing <laughs> ideas up in my head. Right. And <laughs> I don't think they probably won't, because a, a huge... If Firefly had got into a huge franchise. There's comics, there's um, 
There's or actually, any of the movie. There was a movie that came out like a couple of years afterwards. So yeah, so yeah. yeah my watch, friends had the movie. If you watch the show, I see watch, like the watch the movie afterwards. They made like a Clue game off it. I always like walk by it when I'm at Barnes and Noble. So I mean, yeah, no one there's, there's wants to buy it because there. they don't know about it. But it's like, it's kind of strange how they have a clue game on a series that didn't last long. <laughs> it's it's like that, said, it's kind of fan base is that dedicated. Things to base a clue game off of. <laughs> But yeah, kind of what it'd be about is that <clears throat> space western genre just blew me away. It's like that makes sense. We have a space western and Spike, my God, Spike, he is like the Spike. best ever. It doesn't even look space. I mean, it does have that same feel as a space western, but it doesn't like show like a no. guy wearing a cowboy hat, except well, for that one episode. <laughs> But like where he where Spike faced like a guy who looks like himself, but like with blonde hair, which is also one of my favorite episodes of the series, because like it was actually the first episode I saw, and it actually hooked me on the show. I was probably like in fourth grade when I was seeing it. I usually like to wake up early and watch like what was on Adult Swim like early in the morning, because they usually have like anime on there, mm -hmm. and like it was on, and it was just like. The opening scene of it was just like really interesting, and, and I've never seen a show like it before. It was like weird and stuff, but it was kind of like the weirdness that I can like appreciate. <laughs> yeah, it's that kind of weird. Yeah. I truly appreciate the music. I would agree. The music is fantastic. Uh, you will love jazz after watching the the show. Like, oh, I already love the jazz. So huh? get ready to have it be my favorite genre. <laughs> it's just no. I can never. The one show that... oh, she's a genius. Hmm. Oh yeah, I, no. The one show the guy created Cowboy Bebop did. Um, have any of you guys seen Shamrock Shampoo? Oh, it sounds familiar. I, I know it. I need to watch it still. The the music of that show, I literally have all of that guy's music. Like it's like hip hop beats, but it's like good oh, hip hop beats, yeah, like not like the mainstream about. one. New yeah. Havas, like that's his music, but like. That got me into like listeners' music. That show, Semi Shimplu, and the guy who made that show did mm -hmm. Cowboy Bebop and yep. Space Dandy. <laughs> yep. Yeah. There, there it's you definitely go. Definitely a classic to check out. Yeah. Yeah. The composer of Cowboy Bebop is Yoko Kano, and yeah. she's she's really she's, she's really good. Yeah, she's really good. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Um, one of my favorite pieces of music is from the episode. It's a two-parter episode called Jupiter Jazz. Oh, it, it, yes. The, 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 the I music, love that. Like, it's so yes. great. That's the, the, the music in that episode is mesmerizing. The, yeah, that guy who was actually like a transvestite in the episode, or like, I don't know. It was yeah. just so weird. Yeah, he, he it had was, bad experiments on him. Yeah, it was, yeah, that, he, that was, he was that a pretty cool character. Like, like <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> hello, is, did someone get frozen or something? <laughs> Maybe. Oh dear, Cameron did. Yeah, yeah Cameron did. Cam uh, okay, Cameron got petrified. Okay. Oh, there we there go. Was there was glitching. <laughs> you got petrified. Kind of looking up. Can you hear me? Glitching on me. Yes, we got you. Yeah. Oh dear. All right, Bloody. and I, th I think that's the cue to go on to Cameron with his uh, current show. Cameron. Hello. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There you go. All right, we got him. Okay. Uh, we were going to have you talk about your cur current show. <laughs> Who, for me? My like current show? Okay. Yeah. Uh, my current show was uh, another anime called uh, Little Witch Academia. Oh, I have heard, I've uh, heard I of it. I really think it classifies as a show. Uh, it's uh, It's got two episodes. Oh, dear. Oh no, his finger, it's not flinching. The witch has cast a spell! He, he did say Little Witch Academy, right? Yeah, he did. He had... Oh, there we go. Wait, the Witch Academy? I was thinking of like another... Oh wait, actually, never mind, it's the same one. I was like thinking of another Academy show. Hmm. Alright, sort of... sorry, I, I think I just missed what you guys said. Sorry. What? Well, I, I I didn't hear the show you said. Yeah. Uh, you you guys are you guys are. Uh, I'm sorry. I, you guys are lagging. I can't hear. I can't. I am. Let me 
<laughs> uh, <laughs> I was gonna ask um, what show did you say again? Uh, Little Witch Academia. Uh, okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. That's, That's a Netflix show. You said. Or it's on Netflix. Yeah, it is on I Netflix. See, yeah, that, yeah, it's like a new show that's on there, but... It's not really a show. Okay, like I, sorry, you guys I, You guys are still glitching out. I, Hello? I think my, sorry. my internet... I, oh, man. Oh. It might be my Wi-Fi. Well, just... You might... Be, you can just talk about the show, and um, we'll wait. Yeah. All right. So the show, uh, it was a Kickstarter campaign, and for two parts, like there's a 20 minute episode and a 50 minute episode, and um, it's about this girl named Akko who uh, who was dreaming to become a witch, so she goes to Hogwarts. <laughs> well, it's not really Hogwarts. It's yeah. And, uh, it's basically Hogwarts. And yes. so they, um, um, and, she, and she's not really good at it, and she's trying to, she's not really good at being a witch, and she's trying her best to cope with it and keep an upbeat attitude. It's a pretty charming little show. I, I don't really think there's much deep to it or anything like that. Um, but I think, I, I think the reason it was made was probably very, is, is a pretty interesting story. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, yep. I can definitely hear you. Yeah, I can hear right. you. Yeah, I think I think the way it was, the reason why it was made was pretty interesting. Like why it was on Kickstarter. Like I, I never really seen like an anime going to Kickstarter before. <clears throat> because um, it, and it's because the anime industry is kind of like in a slump right now. Like people keep pirating their shows, keep, keep pirating different shows, and the and the anime pe people running the anime industry aren't being paid. And so they have to go to Kickstarter, and they have to mooch off of their fans in order to get good content out these days. Well, that's an interesting show, do? though. Oh wait. yeah, it, 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 I found it to be really charming and really cute. And something that really, really stands out about it is the um, is how the characters each have their own distinct look. Because I think in a lot of animes, they tend a lot of characters tend to look the same. Yeah, like, I hate how. You can probably Google image them, and you can see like all the different like reference sheets that they use for the show, and all the different designs they use for all the different characters. Yeah, I was gonna say that's probably why anime hasn't caught on with the in the U.S. as strongly as people would like to, because you know it has a tendency to look the same. You know, I mean, yeah. not all the time. I mean, like. Yes, there are some that actually look similar from another, but like they, I mean, there when there's one that's different, it's actually really good. Like that difference, right? But anyways, the show, yeah, basically, so it's basically like a Harry Potter anime show, which is what you sort said. Of, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the school is, is like a girl school, though. It, it's just oh. girls. <laughs> Oh, I just toggled my mouse. Keep going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, I, I don't really know if there's much to say about it. I mean, it's, it's very brief and very short. Okay. And I, the character, I, I guess we could talk about the characters. The main character is Akko. She's uh, kind of this, up, she's got an upbeat attitude. She's always trying to do her best, but she's like, really bad at what she does. <laughs> Like Star and Star versus the Force of Evil. Yeah, she's she's kind of like her, and then uh, she, she has a few of her friends. Their names escape me at the moment. Uh, one of her friends' name is Susie, and she's kind of like the goth girl of the group. And I think uh, she's my favorite. Goth she's, she's very much like Raven. <laughs> she's very much like Raven from Teen Titan. Hey <laughs> guys, beware. We have waffles. <laughs> hey, hey, don't mention that. Um, please. <sighs> that I saw, like, the episode. I'm and... sorry. I'm sorry. I 
it made me hate what waffles. That spawned. It made me hate waffles. All right. But her right, other friend. So oh. Mike's turn with the. What? What'd you say? Oh. Uh, are we moving on? Yeah. Okay. And I was about to say Mike's turn with a show from the past. Alright. Uh. So. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've been debating what cartoon to talk about. It's just. There's so many good cartoons out there. It's, when it's. Yeah, there are classics or it's hard. current it's hard to pick one i mean sure when it comes to classics I'll, I'll just say turtles or you know something like Rocco's modern life or tailspin there's so many to choose from um what i will talk about is a current show actually instead um a current okay. show a current show that came out last year which only lasted one season it just got canceled what what yes. show is it <laughs> The show, which has been premiered on Comedy Central, known as Moonbeam City. Oh, oh, I know you were talking about that. Yeah. I kind of want to check it out. Yeah, I mean, it'll be a Facebook chat. Reminds me of like. I'm looking up right now. I never reason. heard of it. it. It's a pretty good show. It, it has that same like '80s beam style. I mean, if you guys play Doe May Cry Three, uh, Blood Dragon. It's kind of like that kind of cheesy anime look when you look at like the title of that game, but yeah. like yeah, it's, it's like it's kind of like oh much like cheesy anime. Jesus. I actually I, I saw it. I I just I just looked it up. I actually saw the trailer for that show. Yeah, it only lasted ten episodes, and yeah, just recently it just it, it got canceled after one season because it, it's just like ah. oh man. But it's it's I it's, hate when Comedy Central does that. It does. Like, Berry, uh, they got canceled, even though I kind of knew it was going to get canceled in the first place, but, like... <laughs> yeah, so it's... Is it's, it good? Any good, or is it did it get canceled for a reason? Well, well I think... It, it probably because it lacks those good old-fashioned values, you know? Or it looks very similar to Archer. I mean, it has, like, that similarity, yeah, kind of. And, and that's what and everyone like, keeps uh, talking about, which is so annoying to hear, because there's no similarities whatsoever. I mean, sure. I you, mean, you, you kind of... You, not the style, but, like, the character. That's like, what I mean. The character looks like Archer. That's what I mean. You, you, they, they always compare... Uh, the, ca the character's name is Dazzle in the show. Dazzle, voiced by Rob Lowe. Um comparing to Archer, because they, they have, like, stupid, you know, mentalities in their heads, but otherwise, they're, they're two completely different characters, in my opinion, but, um, <laughs> god damn this show, because it has, it oozes everything 80s, it's, it's a parody of 80s cop shows, and it's just, Dazzle is, like, he's so, like, he's the best cop out there in Moonbeam City, but he's so stupid sometimes, he just, he gets sidetracked a lot, like, there's, there's a few episodes where, um, this one episode, I actually got nominated for an Annie Award, but lost to The Simpsons somehow. What the fuck is it with that? Um, I it happens. <laughs> I'm not used to it. I mean, it happens. Fucking, fucking Simpsons. <laughs> so, so the episode, which is, I don't know why, I think it's my favorite right now. It's called, uh, Quest for Aquaria, which is, um, uh, in the episode, which I'll just... He, uh, Dazzle gets fascinated with the ocean. So he goes in the ocean to find a, a missing dolphin. So he's out there looking for a dolphin, and he falls in love with a dolphin. Interesting. <laughs> I wonder how it's gonna turn out. He, uh, so they, had, they he goes to the, the lab tech at, at the police station. He's like, maybe a robot dolphin suit so I can talk with this dolphin. You know, and he's got the robot. <laughs> dolphin suit on. He's like, hey, hey, Splasha, her name is. Hey, well, you want to go on a date? And then there's like a montage set, like it's like a Toto-esque band, like Africa kind of sounding music, like 80s music playing. Oh. It's like, oh, it's so like yeah. It's like Roxanne, only intentionally funny. It's so, it's so cheesy. It's just like, <laughs> is this guy really in love with this fucking dolphin? Is this like... <laughs> hey, I mean... I would be in love with a dolphin if it started to wink at me. I'd be like... And then, <laughs> and then um... You know, dolphins actually are known to force themselves on people. Oh, I can yeah, probably be the reason it, why. It's true. I mean, 
Like, I mean, they are. Uh, it has happened. There have been records, and don't even get me started on dolphins and puffer pufferfish. It's oh, just, man, yeah. And um... I know I know a lot about the pufferfish, though. <laughs> So, Dazzle has, like, this rival at the police station called Rad, who's, um, voiced by Will oh. For- who's voiced by Will Forte. Um, oh, Will Forte. <laughs> yeah, so, he, he, Rad comes up, you know, he tries to compete with Dazzle a lot, you know, there's a lot of, like, jealousy going on, like, in the episode with the dolphin, he actually builds, like, this orca robot suit, so he's so he's like, he's like, I want to find an orca and make love with it somehow. It's just like this it's like, like competition kind of thing between the two throughout the series. It's just so cheap. And then there's this one episode where uh, Dazza goes to jail, and it's like a futuristic jail where it, it's like an AI jail, and it's talking. So, uh, and the jail somehow falls in love with Dazzle, and, they, <laughs> and he fucks, fucks the jail. <laughs> Wait, what? I get the dog, but the jail? I mean, I mean, it is kind of... You can see that in Adventure Time, obviously. I mean, jail. It's just so unbelievable what Dazzle does. I think I saw it in Adventure Time. So funny. What is this show? <laughs> it's, it's I kind of want to watch it now. It's like... like it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. They have to bring it back. I'm sorry, but you just saying about, like, a jail mating with a person? I mean... <laughs> That's something I gotta check out. It's, I it's, need to know how that works. It's a great show. Um, there's another episode where um, Dazzle. Does hell can get creepy? Keep stop laughing about it because it's so funny. Um, I don't like where this conversation's going. <laughs> I'm sorry if it's bothering you. Um, there's an episode <laughs> where. No, it's okay. <laughs> there's an episode where Dazzle uh, has to do the stunt and he fails to do the stunt, so he calls up his father, who is voiced by Adam West in the show. So he got major uh-huh. guest stars. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, oh. Da, 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 Batman. <laughs> I mean... Oddly enough, I haven't seen Adam... Well, actually, I have seen Adam West as Batman. Never mind. But yeah. I have, but, and it's you know, probably the best, cheesiest thing I've seen on television. It's just so funny seeing Adam we'll West's see. voice voice the character in the show it just like and he ends up dying in the show and it's just like oh man um <laughs> if you guys are into the convention circuit you know like anime conventions they do an episode about doing a con called cop con oh all, my gosh <laughs> and they talk about why do they cancel it they have so much promises it breaks <laughs> oh, I mean, <laughs> it does and um it just shows what cop con would look like, you know, all the like the stuff the cops bring in, you know, just to fight crime. And it's just, there's like a robot that they use, and there's there's a ray they shoot and makes people have diarrhea. Oh my word! Yeah, that, that that's something you see in like a Ratchet and Clank game or something. It's like, the diarrhea it's, ray. Yeah, it's just like so funny to see what they come up with, and then something happens in there, you know, during the con, and they have to figure it out. It's like it's like a kind of like a cop procedural slash mystery slash comedy kind of show um <laughs> there's so many good stuff it's it's something you guys have to check out because there's, there's there's this cult following going around because people want it renewed for a second season i mean it only lasted 10 episodes 10 episodes god damn it 10 episodes is nothing they gotta do another season do I mean, start on kickstarter or something i don't know yeah i gotta yeah find, that's a good place to go you gotta find another station man because Comedy Central just sucks. <laughs> they could do, yeah, they do. Should they do TBS or they should? Do, you know what? They gotta do Adult Swim. I'm sorry. Yeah. I feel like a, that should be a show that. That, should be Adult Swim would, probably that would be a major improvement. That would most certainly be an improvement for them. Yeah. Um, actually, I thought Rick and Morty was their improvement. Uh, that was a fluke. Yeah. I mean, I it's really like Rick like and it. Morty. It's a great show. I mean, like. It's probably one of my favorite shows of, like, the 2010s, like, animated, and probably, like, in general. It's just, like, I should have talked about that show than, like, the other shows. <laughs> yeah, well. I mean, I mean, Rick and Morty's not too bad. I mean, a lot of people, I have a friend who likes Rick and Morty, too, and he talks about it once in a while. It's it's kind of, it's kind of, it's weird how it's like a, oh, like, Doc Brown and Marty McFly kind of feel to it, you know? 
They made but that it's, joke so, it's on the like they're trailer. they're completely different from those right. actual characters. Exactly. Like, it's like the opposite. Morty is nothing like Marty, like uh-huh. at all, and Rick is nothing like Doc. Exactly. Like, Morty, uh, give me, yeah, hand me they, the. They did that break. on the uh, the back to tr- uh, back to the future on this trailer. They called um, they called a. Uh, they called them Rick and Morty. Yes. <laughs> and they yeah. Called Biff that Donald was funny. Trump. They called Biff Donald Trump. I I saw the couch <laughs> gag starring Rick and Morty for The Simpsons, oh, and it God. was oh gold. like I love that they, I love that crossover. Probably the best crossover I've seen like since Family Guy and The Simpsons. Basically, probably even better because it was like short and like they literally killed The Simpsons. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what have you done? You just killed The Simpsons. They're like a big icon or something. I love how he just goes around the house and he just starts, like, eating donuts and then stealing jewelry and shit. And then, like, Ned Flander comes over, he shoots it with a freeze ray, and he just, like, dies. Like, (laughs) and then he turns the Simpsons back and they're, like, kind of mutated, like, Ricks and stuff. Like, it it was just genius. Not cool, man. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. All of that, yes. Um, but yeah, it just... If you can ever find Moonbeam City, just watch it. Support it somehow. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of people on Twitter are like, hey, get some other channel. Even like TBS, maybe FX, maybe Adult Swim at some point. Maybe Kickstarter, come on. we got to support it to bring it back. I love this show so much. Or, probably the last solution, Netflix... Okay. I mean, yeah, that would be something. something. Netflix. I heard they're trying to bring. Of... No, I I heard they're trying to bring back um Young Justice on Netflix. Like <laughs> Young Justice is already on Netflix, but they're gonna like want to continue more episodes of that show. Like <laughs> because a lot of fans love that show. Oh, because yeah. and then it just got canceled after like season two. I mean, I watched like a little bit of it, but there was like a strong. Yeah, me too. <clears throat> Yeah, I I've seen a few episodes of it. Pretty good show. Yeah. It's all right. Okay, so now, so I guess I uh, you done with the uh, Moonbeam City there, Mike? All right, know. grand finale, and my pick for the current cartoon is one known as Ever After High. Wait, is that like um? I'm sorry, but is that, is that like, like a Monster Army High? Super- yeah, is it, it like is that kind of a yeah. fairy tale <laughs> sister to Monster High? And when I first saw it in the store, I was like, "Really? They're doing this?" Then I saw it on Netflix, and I'm like, "Sister's probably gonna force me to watch it," so. Might as well. Just gotta get through it. Yep. I get through the... And I'm like... And, you know, I can detox myself with whatever is good left of Once Upon a Time. Watch through the first two seasons. And I'm sitting there going... I pick up uh, a poster of Once Upon a Time and compare it to Monster High. I mean, Ever After High and I look at Once Upon a Time. Why aren't you as good as this? I actually have to say that about Once Upon a Time. Mm. I haven't seen Once Upon a Time. I've only seen the one episode where it showed Elsa from Frozen, and that's because my brother had like a college friend over, and she was just into it so much, and so I just watched it with them. And Mm -hmm. it was, I mean, I don't know. The visuals is really weak in that show, but... Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, and yeah, with and um, with Ever After High, I watch it. And I'm like, it is the best. It's easily one of the best parodies out there. It not it pretty much succeeds as a parody. It celebrates everything that we love about fairy tales and schools with a high school setting, while ultimately making fun of it while still creating its own world. And it just keeps throwing in joke after joke after joke, and a good majority of them hit bullseyes. In, in my, in my opinion, it really does the job, does the job better than Shrek. 
I don't know about that, but but I'd like to yeah. check it out to see if you're right about that. But yeah, I, I'll say right now the first season it's just a bu- mostly a bunch of little webisodes, but even then it's still very funny. And um, the second one does feel more like a coherent story. Uh, the third season is my favorite. It they go Shrek. to Wonderland. Better than they Shrek go to Wonder- the third. <laughs> uh, they don't Shrek the it's third. Not, it's, it's not hard to be better than Shrek the third. <laughs> yeah, it, it. So far, it's proven to not be hard to mess up. Like. And I, I'll say uh, about the Wonderland se- season, it's probably the most creative, imaginative, playful version of Wonderland we've seen from seen in any adaptation of Alice in Wonderland since the Disney animated version. Yeah. Speaking of Alice in Wonderland, did any of you guys see the new trailer to the new Alice in Wonderland movie? Off with its head. Just gave away the whole story. Great. Nice going. Now I'm not going to go see it anymore. (laughs) The whole trailer just gave away. I hated the first one. I wasn't going to go see it anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I've never seen this one. I'll just rewatch Ever After High. It's it's playful. It's colorful. It's got Hmm. really great details. Really lovable characters. Like, and one interesting aspect is this whole thing of royals versus rebels. And I'm like, oh my gosh, is this going to be popular versus unpopular and all that kind of stuff? It isn't. And what? I'm like, and oh. I'm like, okay, which one of these two say, plots like... is the bad guy? And the show's like, neither side's the bad guy. And I'm like, oh, but surely there's got to be a super ultra popular girl, you know, that kind of thing. And the show's like, Oh, Apple White. Yeah, she's incredibly complex, and she's a character we're supposed to root for. And I'm like, well, that's impressive, but you got to have that mean girl, you know, the the bully that's in every show. And mm-hmm. I remember High is like, all right, fine, here's Swan Duchess. We don't care about her. Let's focus on the characters we would actually care about. Mm. So it sounds like it's trying to put cliches on their head, like, trying to flip them over. Oh, yeah. It flips the cliches over on their head and puts them on a roller coaster. Sure. That might be worth checking out. I don't know if I... I don't really know if I'd get into the show, but it might... It, it might yeah, be worth I, checking out to see if it's like that. Yeah, I... I'm, I'll, I'll think just, about it. Now, I'm still astonished that it's as good as it is, considering that its sister Ever After High is just... You're turning me into a zombie. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. But, yeah, it's that that's pretty much how I would describe it. It's very self-aware... And has fun with it. And that's all I can ask of a show that's trying to sell a toy, essentially. Yeah, I mean, like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I mean, like, it depends on, like, how people view it, mainly. Like, depending on how they view it. I mean, you can't judge a book by its cover. It it all comes down to, like, Mm -hmm. checking out and, like, seeing if it's good or not, like... Honestly, that's basically basically just what it is. Actually, going back yeah. to what you said about um, what you said about like how there's no really mean girl cliche in that show, that's actually kind of what Little Witch Academia does. There's there is this character uh. who's kind of like the mean kind of like the mean girl, but actually there's mm-hmm. a lot more to her as as the show well, progresses. Well, in the case oh. of Ever After High, they're pretty much like, okay, we're we're putting in the mandatory mean girl, but we're not going to focus on her. We're just going to cast mm-hmm. her aside like the pointless rubbish she is and focus on the characters you want to root for. Yeah. Or just kill her off. <laughs> <laughs> they just actually are very close to doing that. Oh, uh, 
Man, there's gotta be something like that that has to happen, uh, like uh, jumping the shark, but. So as far as Mean Girl cliches go, she doesn't grate on my nerves to 11 teen. Wait, did they do the bus, um, getting hit by the bus cliche where, like, that one girl's mean from the other and then, like, they walk away? Similar to, like, from Mean Girls, kind of? Is there, like, a scene where they kind of do that? <laughs> no, but, well, actually, it was on an ice rink. Oh, wait, on an ice rig? What? Yeah, the mean girl tries to get into an ice skating competition, and Looney Tune hijink slapstick ensues. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it, it's got really good physical humor, but going back to the whole simple thing, um, Ever After High kind of has the opposite problem. It's really incredibly well detailed, to the point where the animation can feel a bit stiff at times. Is it Flash it's animated? Flash. Oh, yep, it's Flash. I'm, I'm not really a big fan of Flash animation that much. I feel like it's kind of like the lazy way of like animating stuff, but like unless if it's like done right, I mean, shows like My Little Pony, Friendship Magic is kind of like that example. It it's it can do it right, but then there are shows like Johnny Test, for example, or like yeah. um you know, just like your typical Flash animation show in general, yeah. just it didn't like it doesn't try that hard to make the characters look so movable and interesting. It's just like oh, it was just done like I don't know. Well, it, it just doesn't. It, it's like they don't break their limits. Basically, the Flash animation. Well, I think the issue with with Ever After High isn't that they want to are in a rush to animate it. It's just that. There's so much detail on the character designs that I'm surprised it moves as smoothly and the characters are as expressive as they are. So, yeah, it's... Gotta sell those toys. That's why there's a bunch of details on them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they actually tone back from the models that they use in the commercials, but... Which... Thank you, because the models in the commercials look scary. Yeah, product placement, that's what it is. Gotta scare little yeah, kids. But, you know, it, it kind of makes me want to bring something up about cartoons in general that we're kind of in a pretty amazing age where the when I was a kid, sh shows meant to sell toys to little girls was kind of considered the bottom of the barrel all humdrum standard now it's up there with some really greats that are going on like the ninja turtles which was meant to sell toys as well as all these wonderful shows on cartoon network and, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah and right now oh um bad cartoons like teen titans no or or toddler titans i call it toddler titans because they kind of look like toddlers, and they act like toddlers. I mean, you gotta admit that. I like Actually, that I have a toddler no. sister who acts more mature than them. <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, shows like that and a majority of Adult Swim, those are the exception now. And the bad shows are the exception. And mm -hmm. like... The one show I can think of that I'd give a C grade to is Sonic Boom. Oh, I gotta watch that. I haven't seen it. I'm not That's really big on it. I love Sonic, yeah. but I don't like the new Sonics that are coming out. It's like, I'm starting to get why they're not that, like, the 3D games are bad, but I mm -hmm. still grew up with the 3D games, too, and the 2D ones. I play the 2D ones more than the 3D ones, actually. I'd recommend picking up Sonic Colors. It's a great 3D Sonic game. Oh, but, I still gotta play that. But I played Sonic Generations, which is a really good one. Yeah, but anyway, um, Sonic Boom, it's very laid back and very self-aware and has one of the best roasting of the Sonic fandoms I've ever seen. Is it gonna be like... Is it gonna be like furries related? Like, there's gonna be a lot of furries relation kind of to this because i can see that not happening. really basically <laughs> in in the episode 
Sonic, Tails, and Knuckles discover Amy's fan fiction, and oh, they reenact it's, it. It's, it's pictures of Sonic furries, that's what it is. Or is it Sanic, that's what it is. Sanic. Or a cool feel the hedgehog. It's right, so they reenact it. it. It's like this really cheesy kind of, you know, anime-esque adventure. And throughout the whole thing, I was getting the vibe like, I know what you're saying, Sonic Team, uh, behind Sonic Boom. You're saying that we Sonic fan fans are absolutely weird, but you love us for the support. And you know what? You... Thank you for... You know, getting back to what you said about how we're in a pretty golden era of uh, cartoons, you know, I think that really has to be a generational thing. Like, uh, it, for, for the first time, I think we're getting a generation who grew up with cartoons go, growing up to make cartoons, and they, they really they want to put their time and effort into making them really good, like recapturing like what they liked as a child and building on it. It's... Yeah, they get a lot of effort in their shows. Yeah, that's that's pretty much how how it's done, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. watch a really great show as a kid, revisit it as an adult, learn what makes it good so that you can make it better yourself. Yeah. It's a good message. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's just really amazing that the original stuff can dance something alongside that was considered stuff. So, something that was considered so trivi- tri- trivial and so like, eh, is now like being a very, very being really respected. Yeah. But yeah, we do have new good shows now these days, like kid shows mainly, like it's just really good because it's kind of like related to what we're going through right now like this sort of like revolution sort of relation like we're starting to see like hipster related stuff and they're kind of adding it towards like the current cartoons and they're kind of like poking fun of it too and they're they're doing a good job of hiding their adult jokes especially with gravity falls because gravity falls there was like a lot of adult jokes i got from that show like and i was like because i just started watching it during like please come know, to Netflix soon. Two. Yes, please. It has to be on Netflix. And I was like starting to watch it. I was like, oh wow, there's some really adult, there's some really good adult jokes that happily made it on Disney. I mean, like, I, I was I just really surprised. Pixar. Oh yeah, <laughs> but it, it's it's so it works really well, and I, I just I'm glad it had to end it that way because like yeah. if it continued on, it would just I don't know. It but was, they should do yeah, like a year gap where they're like older again but it should be like a special kind of yeah i I actually i like it when shows are like you know what let's quit while they're on the top i I like when shows do that sometimes yeah phoenix and ferb did that kudos to them Mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's better that a show end while people still love it yeah instead of people being like oh it's so annoying for example (laughs) Spongebob, Simpsons. Fairy Sp- Odd Parents. I'm i I'm sorry, I gotta say, I know a lot of people like Fairy Odd Parents, but as an adult right now, I kinda hate it. Expect like I don't even like the character designs for Fairy Odd Parents. I feel like it's just lazy. And, they and, look lazy. I don't know. It, it looks really lazy and like it just the show keeps going on and they add these new characters to the show. By the way, did you see that one episode where they added that one girl? I forgot her name was, but she's like a new character in the show. But yes, like, I'm aware of it. I think she's like the new character now, and she's going to be prominent in the rest of the series. I think she has. God, I, would know, I, think, I would know. It's what never going to end. I think she's got cousin Wanda talking. now. Actually, I think. I would know what you're oh, talking yeah. about, but that would imply that I actually saw the show, which no. I don't want. <laughs> this is funny. And like, I just... saw. I saw. No. I saw the episode, and, like, literally, they're taking selfies of themselves and making duck faces, which looked like the ugliest thing I've seen, like, in television, like, animation. It's basically like how anime hates Kai with a chance of meatballs. Oh, Fair my up. word. It's kind of like my Kai with a chance of meatballs. Oh, my word. The... Oh, man. <laughs> the the cloudy with the 
Dad, this sucks me to fairly odd parents. And that could be a crossover. I would like to see that someday. Just like, <laughs> it, it's gonna oh happen. God. Both shitty animation designs and lazy writing too, and obnoxious characters like Timmy Turner, for example. Though I do like Tara Strong. She's a great voice yeah, actress. Yes, great. no doubt about it. Tara Strong, Strong is a great Can't voice actress. Her. Yeah, and she also has a brain. Yeah, yeah. but like, and. I think you guys broke up. Yeah. No, you didn't. Can you hear me? Can you hear yeah. Me? Okay, I, yeah, I no, just I could. did ice glass. You're right, ball. I did break up. I broke up with Joe. <laughs> it's not working oh, out, man. Aw, oh, dang it, man. I could have totally been there for you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it I'm happens, kidding. man. It happens, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> hey. I, get, I always say yeah, man, a lot from Adventure Time. That's why I love that. I like how they're just, like, laid back. Like, yeah, man. Yeah. You got it, dude. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, even other shows, um, but, yeah, with the whole cool things, even PBS is still going. I mean, sure, there are the occasional shows, like, uh, yeah, the toddlers, they're just, it, it, it's for Super them. Super Science you know? Kid. It's oh. harmless. But then... But then there's, then you still got Arthur, which is still going strong. Oh, I liked and, Arthur, even though yeah, I Arthur. Like, even though they went to the flash it's so animation. Funny, like, wait, like, which one? Went, Arthur went flash animation, and it looks yeah, it looks did, but I don't really care because it's still doing what they do best: tackles yeah, it, really complex issues in ways that kids can understand. It is good. They have good morals in that show, and it's settled oh. down that like some grown-ups can actually watch it and they'll, mm -hmm. they'll enjoy it. Yes. Like yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I think the reason it's still going on is because nobody has come to take its place. No. You know. Not at all. Better and, not. Yeah. But, yeah, and the other more recent PBS show I was thinking of was Word Girl. It is just Teen Titans Go. This is how you do a campy superhero show. It is, it is so hilarious. I've but, seen a bit of World Girl. That's cause, and I, I just like just flipped the channel after that when I saw like I don't know just a really bad episode of it. But yeah, they used to well, play PBS in my school a lot, like in elementary school. Did they ever like show you like PBS Kids? stuff there when you were like in first or like third grade and like um, because they showed liberty I, kids there a lot that's how i actually got into the show or like known about yeah. it well i they didn't have really cable most TV of my like life it. that's how i became the pbs guru oh that's that what they used to call you in school <laughs> hey i mean it's a cool nickname the ps guru you know so much about it yep. Yes. I'm called the Star Wars guru, even though I don't know much about it, but I know <laughs> some stuff about it. Well, not mm -hmm. some, but, like, not as much as, like, the fanboys, but still. I, I am a fanboy yeah. of it, but... <laughs> I don't think I've been called a guru on anything. That's okay. <laughs> no, it makes you up your own guru. That's okay. <laughs> we'll call you the Nadia guru. Nadia yeah. guru? Okay. Huh? Yeah. Anything you want to say, Mike? No, this has been uh, a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff. Cartoons in general just brings every generation together, whether it's old or new. Yeah. Um, it's or I anime. Know, or anime. It's yeah. It's, it's all <laughs> kind of piled into one. It's just it's just animation so, in general. When it comes to television yeah. series, you know, it's just it's fascinating yeah. how people create these stories and characters, and you get fascinated with them. Mm -hmm. I think there's something about animation that really like um, wow people. Like it, it, it's some, it, even even if like a movie's bad, people still like are like, oh, it's animated, so it, it, we can give it a pass. Or well, I think maybe it's because they it takes us to worlds beyond ours, and yeah. we're we're 
the boundaries are only set by the people who make the, up. these worlds. Yeah, I just feel I feel similar too. Just like anything like you grew up with animated or just like someone getting into anime, honestly, they're two different things, but like so they have like a similarity is this that they have they gotta make like a good story. I mean, they can do like I mean, it has to be, like, their own show, basically. They gotta do, like, what's the best for it, and if it's bad, then it's bad. If it's good, it's good. And then, like, there are times where it, it just, like... I mean, there's different generations of it, don't get me wrong. And, like, each one oh, of yeah. them has, like, their own style and meaning to one another, but, like, basically, I do like how today's animation is the best, probably, so far that we have grown up with lately because like it's not just like based on product placements like no offense um to anyone who's fan of the 80s um show animated shows but i feel like they made those shows just for product placement purposes and then the 90s came along and batman the animated series came out and oh sorry oh batman the animated series came out and like that just started like a new wave of like making a new animation style and, like, story, because, like, when people think of Batman before that series, they always thought, like, can't be Adam West Batman, and now since they made, like, an animated series with, like, a great style... (laughs) (laughs) But, (laughs) anyway, it's back to, like, the subject. When they made that series, they just, like, it was something new, and I think that's why that series is one of the best animated series ever, because it, it broke boundaries, and it made it more enjoyable for both kids and adults. And watching it for the first time, there was, like, a lot of dark elements in that show, and I wish I put it yeah. as, like, my favorites, but I had to pick Cowboy Bebop. But just overall, each animation has, like, its generations, though a lot of people don't like the animation that came out in the 2000s, but... There are some good ones well, out there. There's a low 2000s. point. There has, to, there has to be a low there's... point in order to get a high point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. Like Snack, but... for example. Like before, 2009. Which... You guys uh, get frozen. No, 2007 is when I started. I stopped watching Cartoon Network because, like, of Chowder and, like, Flapjack and, like, Total Drama Island, even though I kind of watched a little bit of it. It just wasn't the same as, like... Ed and Eddie or Powerpuff Girls, and then like Adventure Time came on again, and then I just got back into it because yeah. it was just something new. Yeah, and of course, do we even need to say about the live action stuff in two thousand nine? It really check some of those out. Just like, like a torture, basically. Like mm-hmm. watch all the live action movies based on cartoons in order. Mm-hmm. And <sighs> yeah, but hey, yeah, but hey, we got, we still do our own Saturday mornings, watch our cartoons, mm-hmm. eat cereal. We customize them now. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just since Saturday morning cartoons it, it become uh dead. You know, we do our own thing. You know, cartoons are still running, but we just still watch them on and you just enjoy them. I remember when uh, Saturday Morning Cartoons died out, and I was like, wow, yeah, really? I, I remember too. just watching them, just watch every morning. It's like, I used to just watch them, just eat my cereal and when be happy. When did it die out? Um, yeah, well, that's, yeah, let me tell you, I think it was recent, actually. Because, I, uh, yeah, because I grew I up with Saturday Morning Cartoons, with especially oh. Kids WB, and that's how I, like, I mean, I didn't really hey, watch that. You guys that are, much um, up again. Oh, sorry. Oh, dear. Hello. I know it, it, it's anyway, it's terrible. The, oh, the are, very last Saturday morning cartoon I saw was Spectacular Spider-Man. Oh, I gotta watch that series because, like, I heard Marvel TV shows aren't that good, especially the ones on Disney XD. They just look like cheap knockoffs of like their movie counterparts, I which I kind of don't like when they do to that. Capitalize on the movie, yeah. And, I don't but... like how they did that. I think the only exception would be the episode of Ultimate Spider-Man, Ultimate Deadpool. Where heard of that it had something that the show needed. A straight man. Yes. And a Deadpool. And breaking the fourth Deadpool wall. Deadpool the straight man? 
No, he's the Spider-Man the straight man. became the straight man no. to Deadpool. You guys, you guys haven't oh. heard of so, but yeah, the next Deadpool movie, he's gay. Like that's what they said. Mm. I think he's gonna hook up with Cable. Really? <laughs> that's what's gonna happen. Yeah, I feel like that's gonna happen. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it was uh, a couple of years ago, actually. September twenty seven, twenty fourteen, is when U.S. broadcast networks uh, aired nothing for Saturday morning cartoons. They stopped doing that. So. Well, it's sad. But hey, so you like, know, we st- we still got Netflix. We still got YouTube. So it didn't die. It just. But it's not the same. It's not the same. I well, on the TV and the... in you cereal. God damn it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I the cereal these think... days ain't the same cereal as we grew up with. I mean, have you seen tricks lately? It no longer resembles fruit. It resembles rainbow pellets. I don't what? even want it. Oh, it's it's rabbit pellets for crying out loud. I don't eat tricks. <laughs> no. Can I, I want to bring something up. Um, did you guys see that Rick and Morty episode where, like, they were watching, they were, like, looping through channels from, like, different universes, and uh-huh. they did one, like, one, they, it was, like, the tricks guy mixed with Bucky Charms, and he's, like, eating them, and then, like, the kids come out, and they literally just, like, cut his stomach open, and they eat, like, the little, like, Lucky Charms, like, knockoffs. It was just, like... That's what happened. That's what happened. I posted on Facebook, actually, one day on the club on St. Patrick's Day. I I just like like posting it, because it just related to that. (laughs) That could be another topic. Internet cartoons. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, There's so many. God, How it it should have ended is the best one, I think, I'm seeing so far. Yeah. I, I like to go on the internet and just, like, on YouTube and just look for, like, really creative and really, mm-hmm. like, different out-there internet cartoons that people have made, like, really expressing their creativity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I watch some of those sometimes, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was thanks to those I actually got into My Little Pony when Rainbow Dash beat the ever-loving daylights out of Starscream. Oh, yeah. I, that's the... <laughs> that's the uh, Death battle, death match. <laughs> yeah, the death battle. And while the accuracy measurements on Rainbow Dash don't hold up, yeah, Starscream would still lose senselessly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's so much to talk That's about when it comes to cartoons. That's coming out. Yeah. Yeah. It's a never-ending so, topic. It's never-ending, and that's why I wanted to do this in the first place because cartoons is a unique topic enough just to go into it you know there's lots of stuff to talk about and these guys are truly amazing when it comes to talking about what they enjoy the best and hopefully uh you guys like this episode of cartoon royale maybe i'll do this as a spin-off podcast and maybe i'll bring these guys back as regulars i'm down for another one you know whenever there's a movie based on a specific cartoon you know who to call, especially considering no, next it. year we'll be getting the magic of friendship. <laughs> but yeah, looking. no, I highly recommend Animat doing a top ten animated movies based on cartoons. I feel like yeah. that would be a yeah. Yeah. top ten yeah, that would list. Make nice spiritual there's so scene. many of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's, yeah, there might be yeah. some. There might be if some. If you're watching, if he's watching, if you're watching Matt, you should do it. <laughs> yes. Please, I beg of you. That will be the best, like, top ten list ever because there's just so many that could be included on the list. And it has to be theatrical. It can't be, like, uh, movie specials. It has to be well, theatrical. if you take out the movie specials, that would be very hard to locate, you know? Not yeah. really. I mean, you got, like, the Simpsons movie, Mask of the Phantasm, Powerpuff Girls movie, and, Recent like... You could oh a, even the anime movies that are based on TV shows. There's like a ton of that, yeah. so it'll be kind of. There's hard. a lot of Dragon Ball Z movies. Yeah, Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, like Cowboy Bebop. The movie is my favorite because yeah. it actually did have a theatrical release in Japan and in America for a few like days, so it actually counts. There you go. There we go. I'll, or uh... Batman Mask of the Phantasm. Yeah, that one. That's mm-hmm. a, that's my other favorite one. 
I'll, uh, I'll make sure to tell yeah. Matt that. I'll tell Matt that, and I'll send him this. He's just like, hey, get it, guys who want to do a top ten list. A new yeah. One. Yep. And uh, if I have anything to say, also to Morgan and James, you two are awesome. Morgan, I, my, if I get my YouTube gear into high gear, I might do DreamWorks vaulting with the hand drawn. And James, I'm still Keep doing that with the YouTube movie high thing. gear. Yep, and James, with the if I get YouTube into high gear, I might do the Chris Van Allsburg tri- trilogy with you. Yeah. It's, it's... So you've actually met uh, James and uh, Nope. Morgan. No. no, I no. have not met them either. <laughs> so they respond to my comments the most. Yeah, yeah. So you guys always ignored me when I was on the club, Morgan and James. What's wrong with you guys? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you need the right vocabulary and what is the right buttons to push. Yeah. <laughs> My fingers are too big for the buttons. They always like mess up. A pen can help. Do I look like I have big fingers? <laughs> We've like grow them big. I mean, <laughs> uh, and of course, I'd be happy to contribute stuff to Matt. I know I'm going to be sending him some artwork. Oh, you know, I can't wait for the letter. A few days ago. What's in the box? I, I, I still haven't sent yeah. any yet. But, like, I don't know. I, I feel like a I don't... a few days ago. And also, let's Mike, just say... Good job on sending him uh, chaos. Watching that, I'm trolling you, by the way. Oh, I got an I am trolling. The letter is pretty trolly. Like... Um, I got a question. Does Matt... When he does Blu-ray reviews, does he only do, like, animated movies on Blu-ray reviews? I think that's what it is, actually. I think it is... It's just, it is? It's just animated okay. Blu-rays, yeah. Because, like, it always said, like, and like, animated like Blu-ray how... reviews, and I wasn't sure if it was just like animated because like has to be. I just recently, yeah, because I recently just saw Star Wars: The Force Awakens like download on digital mm-hmm. HD, and there's some really good special features like extras that he can actually like talk. Aside about. from the deleted scenes, yes, those deleted scenes they were pretty amazing. I saw all five of them, I even though they're pointless. It was cool to see. Yeah, some of them was like a bit off, but anyways, it, it was a great. It's great to get like on both digital HD and Blu-ray. Oh man, I, yeah. I'm waiting for the Blu-ray. I'm not getting it digital HD. Yeah, that that's probably what my family's gonna be getting for Christmas this year. <laughs> it's a great oh, gift. Got a long would... way to wait. <laughs> Coming up this Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be on Walmart at that time buying, buying the DVD there. <laughs> just stake out the night. Oh. Just like, I'm waiting for the release. I'm waiting for the release. Oh, get in there. Get yeah. In there. <laughs> just buy it. And I'll be I'm gonna, sitting... Uh, I'm going to climb up onto the... I'm, I'm going to climb up onto the roof and then sneak into the vent. <laughs> yes. I, I feel I, like... It should be like those big vents where you can fit your whole body in. I feel like... Yeah. yeah those it should be like those vents. vents. Those cliche yeah. things yeah. in every fucking no, wait a minute, you guys, I just, I just told everybody my, my plan. To destroy this video right now because the FBI can't know I'm doing that. Ah! Wait, no, what? I don't, I don't want my neural life. Destroy this video right now. I just told you what I do. I will. So I sneak in the video store to get my I, purchase. I will just leave it oh. out of the cut. I'll, le- I'll cut it out. It was the socks idea to reveal everything. The socks <laughs> was responsible for the leak. I think it is out. Oh my gosh. So it's almost 11 o'clock where I am, so it must be like almost 12. Oh, it's almost 1 o'clock in the morning in my area, but I'm fine. I stay up all night. Yeah, I'm kind of used to staying up. That's why I watch Adult Swim a lot, because I stay Mm. up. But This has been Cartoon Royale. Thanks for listening and watching this premiere episode. If you like this episode, please click the like button and tell me if you wanted to see this spin off into an actual podcast. Uh, anyway, I'm going to comment and say that. <laughs> yes, you better comment below and tell me. I will do that. Comment and say what your favorite cartoons are. You know, start a discussion down there. It's always fun to, t- to talk in the comments below. Nobody comments on my videos anymore, goddammit. 
It's sad. It's sad. Get People... damn make any comments on my videos. <laughs> Nobody died this anymore, I swear. Uh, but yes, please subscribe for more content. I will, like I said, if I, if you want me to do the spin-off of these guys, I will produce these along with Cinema Royale. It'll be a, some great fun. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for listening, and uh, good night. See ya. Good night.